So we're talking today about a very important topic, uh, hybrid edge and, uh, and edge computing, and specifically about private mech. And so I'm um, very excited to have this conversation, just by way of introductions for me personally. Brian Partridge, um, Research Vice President at S&P Global, uh, part of the TMT practice, and lead our digital infrastructure practices. And, um, and edge computing is a, is a really important topic these days for us. And what we see is that, you know, really um, enterprises in all industries are thinking about how edge computing is gonna help uh, achieve digital transformation goals. And the reason that edge is, is important, right, is bringing compute resources closer to users and devices, which brings all, uh, many specific benefits, right, about performance, latency, jitter, bandwidth, um, as well as other uh, important requirements around security capabilities, and um, also about uh, data sovereignty and, pri and, and data privacy. So lots of really important reasons why edge has really come to the, to the forefront. And, a particular type of edge computing is MEC. So what had started out as mobile edge computing has now been evolved and the industry has evolved to, to really describe this as multi-access edge computing, more of an agnostic approach. But really this is about a, a network attached set of IT capabilities delivered uh, in an edge node. And that edge node, so there's two major flavors, so public MEC and private MEC. Um, accomplishing similar things but with some distinction. So private MEC typically delivered on an enterprise location on premise uh, as part of a managed service but consumed at, at a premise location. There you're talking about performance in the latency sub five millisecond. And then, and then we've got public MEC which is gonna be positioned within, uh, typically within a carrier infrastructure could be anywhere from five kilometers to several hundred kilometers away but you're talking about latency envelopes 20 milliseconds, maybe 10 milliseconds. And so what we're here today, gentlemen, is to, to really dig into this, this concept of MEC, why it's important, where we are with it today, and, and how the audience should be really thinking about how it might be applied to them, whether they're an enterprise or uh, whether they're an operator. So uh, before we dig in, let's go around the horn here and, and maybe we can start with our host, maybe just a quick introduction and in, in how you're, who you are and your firm and then how you're working with Mac. Sure thing, thank you, Brian. Um, Zan Kisel, representing AWS. I have the pleasure of overseeing AWS Hybrid Edge in partnership with communication service providers, CSPs. And we do so working with system integrators, ISPs, and a host of other companies to do extraordinary things at the edge. Super, Mike? Yeah, no, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, Mike Zirkel, I'm the Vice President in Verizon Business Group, responsible for 5G commercialization. Uh, so that includes our private networks, uh, private mech with AWS, uh, and then all of our private mech functions as well. Got it, and Tunch? Hey, my name is Tunch Yorulmas, uh, coming from uh, a little bit a different and a little bit a distant place from Tokyo, Japan. I'm a Senior Managing Director for uh, APEC, and uh, in charge of cloud first networks. As Zarn and you put together uh, very nicely, really Edge is uh, now taking hold very strongly in different parts of the world. And it will be, I think, a pretty interesting discussion now. So we have a perfect panel here. We've got operator, we've got hyper, hyperscale, we've got SI. So let's start with the SI. So Accenture, obviously you've got a lot of visibility into what's happening around digital transformation across all industries, what's being invested. And I'd like to, you, your perspective on, you know, where do you see MEC fitting in, you know, and, and how are your clients thinking about MEC? What are some of the opportunities and challenges? I mean, Brian, you know, we are all technologists. I mean, we love technology. That's why we are in this business. And I think it was uh, coming from probably Bill Gates as well. Like he was saying that the, we forecast the, the things in the, like we exaggerate the things in the short term, but we undermine the things in the long. And uh, Mac is probably one of them. I mean, the, what I should say is that it will be a significant technology. It will, what we observe with post-COVID, things are becoming extremely like countries, especially will like to manufacture in their own and they would like to bring the manufacturing back, starting with US, with many other European countries as well. And, uh, and as a result, they would like to manufacture at a much better cost base with using technology. And this requires automation. And with automation, enabling technologies like Mac, 
like AI and others are indispensable parts of digital transformation. We see, I mean, across the board, like almost all industries are taking step in this direction, but some of them are becoming really unique. Uh, be it, my, like I can say, mining, energy, uh, utilities, and then manufacturing. These are the industries, they are coming to us with uh, very concrete uh, questions. Like, can we do a Mac solution? Can we do a private 5G solution? And how we can really do a uh, OT, uh, a transformation at the end. The challenges as well, I mean, it is, as we just said, like things happen, uh, we want to make happen fast, but there are some bottlenecks. Number one is business case. Yeah. Where is the business case? Will we save money? Will we increase efficiency? Or will we get competency by using this technology that we don't have now? And then the second thing is, okay, guys, I can't really operate this thing. Is there any operational setup you can help us? And third, is there an end-to-end -end solution? Like, we don't want to be the integrator of, by our own enterprise are asking, like the tele, uh, communication technology, edge technology, and the integration to the existing systems. All three should be done together. In a nutshell, I can say these are the main enablers and the main bottlenecks yeah. of the overall solution. Mike, Verizon has been probably the most aggressive uh, network operator, public network operator, to get involved in these, these edge architectures, specifically Mac. How's it going from your seat? What are you seeing as opportunities? What are you seeing as challenges in the early part of the market? So I think what, what becomes interesting is we view it truly as a mobile edge. Um, it, yes, we talk a little bit of multi-access, but real mobile edge. And, and what we've been able to bring to market with AWS is a truly integrated, you know, the, the AWS outpost, with Verizon CRAN to give full integration into a packet core, right? Which kind of changes the, the landscape of how we can then think about the ecosystem, right? So we fully believe that, it, that, that our, the relationship is truly going to enable Industry 4.0. How do we think about the ecosystem, right? And I think that's where, you know, Tun said around how do we think about enabling what's already existing, right? Inside most of manufacturing, most of the industrials are already brownfield. Yep. How do we link into that? How do we think about enabling um, from devices through connectivity to the infrastructure uh, across uh, you know, the, the entirety of what already exists inside of those customers? Uh, I, I think second, you, you mentioned earlier around data sovereignty and data gravity. You know, majority of, of enterprise apps are still on-prem. Um, they're, they're heading towards um, a life cycle kind of upgrade. How do you think about cloud native? So now we can think, how do you think about cloud native and network reliant and network aware at the exact same time? Um, and how does that allow a business case? So between the ecosystem, uh, what the network enables, what the infrastructure enables, I think that's where the, the opportunities become. Uh, I, I think as, as everybody's kind of said around the, the challenges are what's that first use case? Yep. Um, when do we think uh, the, the technologies, the devices, you have to have that ecosystem come together to really make that first use case. We're, we're, we're almost beyond early stage uh, to that maturity where I, I think in, in the, the mid to latter part of this year, we'll start to see that, that acceleration. Sure. And you know, this, like anything, is an ecosystem play at the end of the day. No one can do it all on their own. And AWS, I think, has, does a, as good a job as anyone in sort of executing against ecosystem. So my question for you, Zarn, is, and, in, and particularly in the context of, of the Verizon relationship, how do you guys ensure that you're operating on all levels of the ecosystem from the technology to the business case to the go-to-market motions? What's the, what's the, um, the strategy and, and how are you executing there? Yeah, thank you, Brian. It really starts with that shared mental model and the understanding that we're still learning as we go here, particularly given this is a nascent market with a, with a big opportunity in, in front of us. And there's a number of underlying principles to that. The first principle, is the idea that by fusing cloud and connectivity together, you're really creating a platform that allows companies to do extraordinary things, things that would not otherwise be possible. As we've demonstrated by inserting AWS compute and storage inside the Verizon network, which is now offered as public MEC with 19 wavelength zones today, um, we're also doing the same in a recognition that enterprises, in some instances, require on-premise 
edge technology. And as Mike says, we're doing that together in our partnership underpinned by AWS Outposts. And we also see a lot of, a lot of use cases where it's going to be a mixed bag, a hybrid experience of public and private coming together. Um, the second underlying principle is it's not simply a case of putting the technology out and hoping that the magic just happens. It's really about working collaboratively in terms of go to market. Yeah. And the way in which we do that is through working with developers, system integrators like Accenture, all the way through to, to enterprise. And as you can imagine, the likes of Verizon and AWS, we have a similar, in some instances, similar customers. So how do we collaborate and go to market in terms of working in the best interests of our joint customers? Um, how do we work together with system integrators from, uh, as Tunch says, in terms of justifying and understanding the business case all the way through to integrating and enabling the technology? And of course, we also see system integrators as a way to build and scale as we go to market as well. And then this is all underpinned by our developer ecosystem, as you say. The ecosystem is very important, and no matter whether you're an enterprise, a system integrator, or, or, or a software developer, it's underpinned by that developer experience. And for us as AWS, it's very much about providing a continuous developer experience, what we call the, the edge continuum, basically applying AWS where you need it. Yep. And the third, the third principle is the fact that we're still learning and there's not going to be a one size fits all. There's going to be enterprises, for example, that want a full managed solution, which the likes of Verizon can offer to those that actually want a, a, a platform slash infrastructure, which they themselves can manage and get, get involved with. There's going to be some enterprises that are going to want a, a full suite of, of applications and solutions, which the likes of Accenture working in partnership with Verizon and AWS can provide, and others that are going to, to, to want to look to bring their own software and manage it themselves. So it's not going to be a one size fits all. Um, and we're continuing to learn. Super. So what I heard today is it's early days, but we're ready to go. Uh, technical platforms are ready. Customer traction is starting to happen. And so I think maybe what we can do to, to wrap up here is, is leave the audience with a parting thought, maybe a prediction about what we're going to be saying about Mech in two, five years from now. And I'll start, so my organization builds forecast models, this sort of thing. And we think that the MEC market is going to be a significant um, impact and revenue generator over the next several years on the order of, of uh, you know, 30 billion plus in, in revenue opportunity for companies like AWS and Verizon. And really we think it's going to be a germane platform for digital transformation. So um, I, you know, I'll pass to you, Zarn. What, what would be your key takeaway? Yeah, my key takeaway is that there's an opportunity for everyone at the edge. Whether you're an enterprise, whether you're a software developer, whether you're a system integrator, a CSP, or a cloud provider like AWS, and to really get the most out of this opportunity, it's going to require collaboration amongst us. I mean, it's a really exciting prospect to take the benefits of cloud, then you combine that with a seamless developer experience, apply it where you need it, then you combine that with next generation networks, and then you take that one step further and start exposing the capabilities of them, those networks and integrate them towards the developer community. It, it's a really exciting prospect. So um, you can start building up, you can start building out, and you can start building everywhere. And together, um, we're here to help. Great, Mike? Yeah, ecosystem, ecosystem, ecosystem. Uh, I think is going to be where where the the next couple of years out. How does Verizon continue to enable everybody to do embedded devices? Right, embedded devices are going to massively grow over the next few years. Uh, the connectivity will continue to be fully integrated. Network reliance will continue to happen. Uh, the importance of the infrastructure at the edge. Uh, and then as Zorn said, the, the APIs that we're collectively launching will allow that workload or that app to, to pull through all three. Um, but it'll be the enablement of, of the, the, the main players across the industrials, the ISVs. Uh, that'll, that'll, that'll be the true success of Mobile Edge. Excellent. Tunch? I mean, when we look at history, it took almost 40, 50 years, the initial electric motors get into the factories. And uh, like after Edison invented and others. I, our, my gut feel is that this thing will be much faster. And uh, with the current megatrends, 
in terms of like uh, really digital transformation, uh, manufacturing, moving back to the countries, and uh, cost pressures, and everything. It is like a really extremely important moment in history. And uh, age will be one of the enabling technologies in the, probably in the next three to four years. Again, I don't want to go refer to that. We are exaggerating short term versus long term. But uh, probably in the next two to three years, we will see age, age native age native architectures and, uh, and age enabled solutions. This will be uh, one of the everyday's technology that we will be providing. And that's why it is so important and unique, all of us here as part, different parts of the solution coming together to create such a vision. I think this is exciting. Excellent. Gentlemen, interesting conversation and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, thank Brian. you.